Okay, so um, the, the subject of the next session is uh, training TAs um, to teach um, on a core uh, introductory course. Um, I mean, this is one of the really critical uh, uh, challenges I think um, anyone faces in introducing core uh, um, on, a, on a, at a large scale um, it, as a university course. Inspiring TAs to, to, to do that extra bit of work that's needed to do something that is rather, to teach a course that's rather different from anything that they themselves have encountered before is, is, is uh, uh, one of the kind of the central things you need to do to make sure that this not only, uh, you not only get the right of messages across um, from the lecturer, but also from all of the uh, 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 teaching that's going on. So sadly, our Alvin Birdie is, is not here. Um, he's ill, um, but we have three speakers um, and uh, well, they'll each have about 50 minutes. Carlos is going to begin. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Carlos from the University of Exeter. This was the brief we were given by, by Wendy. I'm not sure I've got the answer to it, but I'm, I'm going to share my experience, uh, share a few ideas, and, uh, and, and also ask for your, your, your participation maybe at the end, if I've got time, to give us some advice, okay? So as um, uh, Margaret was saying, it's really important, the, the participation of the TAs. At my university, lectures are recorded. So that's the first step that we ask our TAs to, to watch the, the lecture recordings. So they, they need to know what the core content is before they can st naturally start teaching um, the content. So as I said yesterday, uh, we've got a very large cohort, not many resources, so the, 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 the tutorial groups are, are fairly large. I mean, if you compare with some of yours, I'm sure they are much lower. We, we're working at bringing this number down, but we still have way too many students in each tutorial. Um, now, students were told they had to do the homework, read the textbook, do all the work before the tutorial. So they should already be familiar with the content. And I've handed out a couple of, uh, one example of a tutorial task that was handed out to students, and also instructions that were sent for TAs about that same tutorial. Now, the idea was to use the tutorials to help students develop skills to answer essay type questions. Okay, so as I said, my final exam was multiple choice questions, partly essay type questions. I said the tutorial should really focus on trying to develop that, that skill of uh, answering those essay type questions. Now, if you're familiar with CORE, you'll see that the instruction sheet is very familiar because all those materials pretty much, I mean, I've adapted a few, but they are already ready for you to use in, in the CORE uh, website. So it's extremely easy because there's extensive teaching guides to actually adapt some problem sets that you can then use in your tutorials if you wish. My experience using this type of, of, of work was to try to also develop in the students the habit of working in a group. Economists don't do that very well. My management colleagues do group work, you know, 24-7. Economists tend not to do that as much, partly because of the nature of the work, but that's something I really, really wanted to, to try to encourage. Um, so, as a first training, and this is something I'd like to share, the Economics Network uh, is an institution that provides training for graduate teaching assistants, free of charge, okay, so there are a number of events all around the UK. We actually have our own workshop based at Exeter every year, and so it's a, a one-day workshop that covers the <laughs> basics of, of, of teaching. Okay, so they get training about how to engage students, how to answer difficult questions, what to do if a student asks a question I, I, I don't have the answer to, and, and so on. Um, what we also did was the first tutorial of the week was taught by the module lead, and the TAs were told to attend. So they had to be in the tutorial to observe the module lead how he uh, handled the tutorials, what kind of dynamics he tried to, to, to get in the classroom and so on. This was really helpful because each module lead has got his own style and you, if you want to ensure consistency of experience across two, two groups, this actually goes a long way about that. 
after the tutorial, there's a conversation between the module lead and all the TAs discussing about what, what went well, what went wrong, what should be tried, what shouldn't be tried, and, and, and very often you change the plans after that first tutorial. You had a question number three that you thought it was going to work really well, and then you drop it because it didn't work at all. Okay, so that's basically what it was. So I provided a little guideline like the one you see in front of you, five pages explaining how to address uh, the, the questions, explaining the material, and then this was followed up by an email with some tips about how maybe to encourage further discussion about the groups. Okay, so those, those were done. And so that's basically how this was uh, handled. Okay, so the way I envisaged and uh, tried to do is get students in groups, pretty much as we are in this room, ask them to work in each question for about 10 minutes, discussing among themselves the, the, the problem, and then have a group, a whole class discussion about that topic, trying to get members of each table involved in that discussion. Okay? God, this is going way too fast. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So, um, even though I did my best to manage this, one of the tutors didn't really engage with core. He didn't really do the pre-reading. He didn't really watch the lecture captures. He didn't really engage. And so, there were a lot of issues there. I don't know what's happening here. It's hurrying me up. Somebody's hurrying me up. Okay. One of the things we all had to fight with is that students are not naturally, especially first-year students, um, inclined to work in groups. You put them around the table, ask, ask them to discuss the ideas, and most of them are really quiet. In fact, most of our students enter the tutorials with a blank piece of paper, a pen, and they're waiting for you to teach. And of course, that's not what I wanted to, to do, so it took quite a while to actually train the students as well. They didn't actually know each other, <laughs> so they were really shy. They didn't actually know, so this was also a good opportunity to, to introduce students to each other. And it did get better. You know, I'd say by the third session, students weren't, um, we didn't need to coach them very hard to start the discussion. But it didn't work from, from day one. It did take quite a while to actually teach students. Okay? And again, this is hurting me. Sorry about that. Well, can I ask you a question? Yes. Is, is any part of the assessment based on group performance? No. No. So um, in a group of 465, it's a minefield. I'm the only person teaching the course, um, so I, I don't have the resources for that. I've got colleagues experimenting with group, assessed group work um, in, in, in level three, but the, the issues are, are tremendous. And because I was teaching this for the first time, I didn't want to introduce too many, too many new difficult things um, there. Do they see the task in advance of the seminar, or is it just given at the seminar? This year, I, I gave them uh, at the seminar. And is this uh, improving attendance? Uh, I think attendance, generally speaking, was pretty good. Um, I did tell them that the questions in the tutorials were very likely to be in the exam, at least some of them. So that encouraged students to come. Uh, and obviously, if you didn't come and take part, they wouldn't have access to that discussion, and so they could suffer that. So using little tricks that we all do, uh, we learned over the years. Um, because tutorials were every fortnight, because that's the only thing I could offer at the time, that led to students wanting more. I was basically covering two units every week, which is a lot. <laughs> That's why there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, um, questions to be covered, and the pace was really, really fast. So if a student hadn't done the reading or hadn't gone to the lecture, he really would be completely lost. He couldn't keep up. Okay? So That's why, and after a while, students uh, understood that they had to do the work beforehand, because otherwise there was no point in coming at all. Um, I've convinced the department to offer weekly tutorials next year, so that's going to hopefully greatly improve um, what's, well, the process. And I've got a, quite a few ideas about how to change it. Right, so um, this worked really well, I would say. 
and he, he, he actually used, was quite useful to test students if they had understood the content that we covered in the lectures and it covered in core. And it worked fairly well for the average student and for the weak student. But I'm not so sure it worked very well for the top students. The top students thought this was too much overlap with the textbook. They would look at the problem, solve it in 30 seconds, and then they wanted more. Okay, so that's why for next year, I plan to do things a little bit different. At least some of the tutorials will probably remain like this because we need to work with the diagrams and make sure they understand that. But because I have more tutorials, I want to introduce um, topics which are related to core, but they're not covered in core. And that will hopefully engage the top students a bit more and make them think about the topics in a different context, in a real life situation. Also link current affairs, so things that come out in the newspapers and the BBC News, link it to the content I think is gonna help engage students. And I want, and this is something I really try to get my students to develop their own opinions about topics. Things like the minimum wage, is it a good or bad idea? We really want our students to, to have opinions about these matters. And so that's really what I want the, the tutorials to be for. I'm also planning to include the TAs in this planning stage. I want to ask them what they think, okay? And, and, and hopefully I want to have this a month before the course start, start meeting the TA so we can go through the plan and try to work together um, and maybe even do a few trials to see what works, what doesn't. But I think involving the TAs in the planning might actually help their buy-in, buying in into the process and, and be feeling that it's their, their plan as well, as opposed to something that the professor imposed on me and, uh, and it's something I've got to research very quickly. So as an example, and this is where I'd like to have your opinion, I thought this would be a good topic. This is a project sponsored by the Nuffield Foundation as well, so I thought it would be quite relevant. I'm sure you've heard about this IFS uh, Deaton uh, review, which it's a long-term project to study what uh, Sir Angus Deaton calls inequalities. Now, the core focus a lot about economic inequality, income inequality, Gini coefficients, but the whole purpose of this review is to study other forms of inequalities. There's gender inequalities, there's geographic inequality, there's age inequality, there's all sorts of inequalities that this report plans to focus on. Okay? And so, by looking at this, we'll have our students thinking about inequality in a different context. And also realize that solving the problem of inequality is not just about income, is not just about transfers, it's, it's, it's more complex than that. Now, there is a report which I predict, uh, initial report, this is something that's going to be worked on in the years to come, um, which already has a lot of statistics that students can digest before the tutorial. So this, I predict, students can actually read before the session. And there's also YouTube videos which could be shown during the tutorial or before. I haven't actually made up my mind what's, what's best here. Um, and a large number of very topical, up-to-date newspaper articles that focus on this with some very interesting headlines that I think will make students engage with the content. Okay, so that's, that's basically um, what I'm planning to do so far. So I've started by defining what the learning outcomes of the session will be. <laughs> that's how far pretty much I've got. It links, another thing I like about this, it links with several units of core at the same time. So we're not lo looking at each unit uh, separately every time and actually forcing students to relate to different units at one point. And what I'd like your feedback on is what would you do? Okay, if you had to plan a tutorial around this, how would you go about it? I'm not sure I've got the time for it, but if, if, we, if we do, have I got five minutes? Can I ask you to work in groups for five minutes? and give me some feedback about how you would organize this tutorial, what students would read beforehand, 
what, what kind of activities would students do during the class? How would you plan this if it was your, your tutorial? Okay, five minutes talking in groups and maybe then uh, I'm trying to do what we preach. So <laughs> I want students to engage in group work, so I want you to engage in group work as well. So how would you design a session based on these materials? And what activities would you include in that one-hour session? Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to um, present you um, my experience as TI in um, using the core at the University of Exeter as well as um, um, my student feedback and suggestion and even my um, feeling and my suggestion to, suggestions to improve this um, teaching. Um, okay, um, my students really appreciate the um, work with CORE and the methodology by, um, in, stored by Carlos because we are um, making small groups for each um, uh, tutorial and um, the subject is really very exciting and very motivating with them. We start with the um, GDP, with the inequality and um, I, I would, would like just to um, give some indication about how to teach inequality for my own um, experience with uh, teaching inequality. My first question is always to ask them uh, what are the word, what is meant by inequality um, for you? And here we have, I have a lot of uh, words like inequality, difference, gender gap, discrimination, and we try to make, um, um, you know, the, the the course and the uh, definition, the the most concise definition and the closest definition to the microeconomic or the macroeconomic theory. And um, here, the students feel really involved in um, understanding the uh, current economic and social issue within a larger perspective. Um, so, at the same time, within the website, we have a lot of references. We have a lot of um, uh, documents that can explain and that can um, uh, differentiate between um, the forms of inequality or uh, whatever the subject we are studying. And um, here, the um, support of uh, the core website is really very, very helpful for students and maybe more um, um, targeting their needs um, with reference to um, the documentation they can find in, in the libraries or in the uh, traditional uh, books. Um, and at the same time, um, the traditional approaches for both macroeconomics and microeconomics um, are found by students as um, not really um, suitable for their need maybe or sometimes they get bored with this. And the utility maximization approach, for example, which is the um, most used one in traditional microeconomics, is not really um, what they understand and they cannot even apply it. They said, we find it not really useful for the normal life when I will be economist and, or when I will be manager of a business. How to use the maximization utility or even as a consumer, I'm not considering um, um, the utility when I buy um, my consumption and uh, my products. Um, so accordingly, their um, suggestions is, um, are more um, asked on um, you know, the content and in, at the same time on the, on the form. For the content, um, they need more international comparisons. Um, we have um, an amazing um, diversity of students from around the world. And uh, they need to understand, for example, the issue of inequality or the issue of um, uh, GDP, income distribution and um, uh, around the world and why, for example, their country is more unequal and why their country is more productive than other with um, not only with the statistics, but with the, with the explanation behind uh, this uh, statistics. The second um, uh, suggestion is about the uh, study case, especially in microeconomics. How to apply, for example, a normal theory in um, microeconomics, uh, the maximization uh, theory, the utility or the profit, to um, a firm or to a business or even to a consumer with um, 
their own uh, data set collection and with uh, their own um, <coughs> understanding of, of the context. So it would be maybe interesting to introduce um, some study cases that can help them um, uh, use the uh, theory directly. And um, I want to add um, another suggestion, uh, which is uh, proposed by several students, as we have not only students from economics background, we have a diversity. Yesterday, we have uh, seen a lot of um, statistics about the distribution by Dan Lee, especially, uh, of um, first year and second year students from different departments. It is the same case in Exeter. And, um, some student asked for um, more connection with the um, other modules, um, in particular politics, philosophy, and mathematics. And um, I found the approach of Gerhardt yesterday when he talked about the module he's teaching, um, which combines, if I uh, understood very well, uh, both economics, uh, politics, and philosophy. I found this approach really interesting. For example, in the study of inequality, you can, even if we have a risk to um, make some contradiction between the theories, between the philosophy, for example, and the economy or the politics, uh, the economics or politics, or uh, sometimes to um, leave with uh, endless um, questions. But I think the approach is more stimulating for the debate, and we can have really interesting um, outcomes. And the, their final um, proposal is in terms of professional skills, how to um, use the theory if they were, for example, or they will be a manager in um, an international firm, in terms of, for example, the microeconomic theory of profit or the isoprofit curve, how to use it concretely in, in, um, in their business and in their work. Um, for my own um, experience and my own uh, feedback, um, I'm not really from um, economics background because um, I did mathematics first during my undergraduate and my graduate level. And after I did um, a PhD in, in labor economics, exactly. I'm doing the second one now in politics. Yes, I agree, it's strange. <laughs> um, I, I really discovered um, with um, uh, my module leaders in Exeter, a new approach of teaching both macro and microeconomics, which is really stimulating and different from what I have seen before in, in, um, uh, during my um, studies. And I consider now economics not only according to the orthodox approach, but with, within a larger perspective, which is really very, very interesting. And I think the future of economics is to expand the discipline into other sciences and into other disciplines. <clears throat> And uh, where is uh, uh, Robin Naylor? Freedom? Yeah, <laughs> we, have, we have more freedom in economics. I think it is not only a theoretical word, but it's really an academic word. And we are lucky to have um, freedom within uh, our universities and our institutes, both in terms of teaching and um, in terms of content sometimes. Even if sometimes, yes, you have to be precautious with some cases and with some country, but I think globally we are free uh, when uh, we teach. However, I think um, economics and microeconomics and macroeconomics first and second years for undergraduates um, could be improved using um, more quantitative tools with maybe more explanation, not only um, um, about the Gini question, but what are the different measures and other different quantitative techniques that allow taking into account, for example, the difference of diversity or, or and the uh, bias um, even in terms of uh, measurements. And I um, would like to propose to uh, Luca especially and Aileen, why not um, to create a TA core network within the website in which we can communicate and we can exchange our different experiences um, and um, from around England and around the world to, to maybe to um, have better feedback and to, um, have, um, to have maybe even in terms of content and in terms of methods, it would be really very, very stimulating. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Stefan. I think we should go straight on to um, Dunley and we'll have uh, some questions at the end. Yeah. Sure. Okay, and um, thank you very much. Um, I think Carlos and Stephen did just uh, have an excellent talk based on, the, um, for example, on the content of the tutorials. And the third to, basically further to uh, Stephen's point on regarding try to, basically the idea to build up the network between the TA and the, the, and the, the uh, teaching fellows. So in my this, uh, very short talk, I would like to focus on the basically how, on how to train TA, how to support TA to enhance the interaction between the TA and the, the lecturers or teaching fellows. So first of all, let me um, briefly um, share my experience. So here, I mean, it refers to the small module I'm teaching, the introduction to applied economics. So the practice on how to interact with TA might be deferred might depend on whether you're teaching a large module or teaching small module. But here I'm on mainly talking about this uh, small module. Basically only have 41 students and only one TA. So what I'm doing, currently doing is that a very standard, basically the TA will be provided with a TA guide, usually one week in advance. And then in this TA guide, I'll show you an example. Um, so basically there are two parts. One is the in-class MCQ. So for this in-class MCQ, basically students don't know this in advance. So it means they come to class unprepared. They don't know what this uh, uh, MCQ will, will look like. So this is uh, like a spontaneously this response. The other one is this uh, homework assignment. means they are already um, very well prepared. They finished the homework. They got uh, basically feedback from the TAs. And then the uh, the homework assignment basically is a mixture of the Excel project and the essay type questions. And then in the TA guide, basically not only the solution, but also the, uh, the guidance, including the marking guidance and the teaching ideas are provided. And this, uh, thanks to the core, these are resources, because in the, if you look at this, uh, uh, the core, if you go to the core website, you look at the resources, usually they, they already provided excellent this, this, um, guidance, including the marking guidance and the teaching ideas. And also the TA have been uh, advised that before, basically before they go to the tutorials, they need to look at this uh, self-evaluation survey completed by students because this reveal what students are really struggle or what students feel relatively easy that the TA do not need to spend too much time on it. So means this can help the TA to plan the time wisely. And I just gave you um, show you a, a quick example of the, this uh, marking guide. Uh, the, this uh, TA guide I, I gave to the, uh, the TA. I think I have opened it. Okay, let me close the one first. Sorry, thank you. Should we close this one as well? Should I close everything? Okay, I think just to I think I just verbally describe it to save time. So basically, TA guide. So basically, I also get, give advice to the TA on how to plan the time wisely. So which part they need to emphasize, which part they can just go over, go over quickly. For example, for the Excel assignment, basically what I advise the TA is that. You just uh, look at the self-evaluation survey to see what stu what the, the students um, suffer, and then very very quickly uh, just um, discuss the uh, the Excel because they already have the solutions the walkthroughs from the from the ebook. Okay, so this is the um so this is the um point basically to advise TA how to plan the time wisely. Okay, so as I mentioned um, before, that I'm proposing basically make some changes for, for next year, basically especially for this uh, tutorial on how to do this Excel project to prepare for for them, for example, to participate in this um, this uh, doing economics, this uh, data competition, 
And then here, the other three tutorials basically just focus on the, uh, the exam type of questions. So because this workshop is supposed to be a uh, very interactive instead of me just uh, talking. So I'm basically, I have a few questions would like to discuss with you. So this question, as I said, is mainly about how to interact with TA, how to support the TA. And here I have basically have uh, these are uh, three questions for discussion. And I would like to, I would like to basically spend five minutes for example, similar to Carlos, this are <laughs> this are design. So we have this a small group discussion, and then we we'll come back basically to have some, and then we we'll talk about it. Okay. So now you can see we have five questions, especially here. I especially for the question two, basically saying that when you interact with your TA, when you try to support the TA, do you think the strategies will be different for a big group? With basically a, a few stu uh, with a few TAs or with for just a small module with a single TA because for example we are teaching this um the economy to uh, to these economic students we have like around eight or, or ten these TAs so we have this weekly meeting and for the um, for the TAs uh, actually for the tutorial this are uh, this uh, TA meeting in the first this uh, meeting actually it was run by the, the by the this lead of the tutor. So basically, they can share experience. So also that Carlos mentioned this economic network. They have this TA training, and in our department, in the UCL economic department, we we have this uh, center for teaching and learning economics. So we also run this uh, TA training session. Basically, for example, on how to give feedback. This kind of session. So now, basically, now I would like to spend five minutes. Basically, have this uh, small this uh, group discussion basically uh, for these uh, uh, three questions, if you don't mind. And then after five minutes, then we, can, we can come back, have some of this uh, discussion. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, very good. Um, I think we still have five minutes for Q&A. In case, uh, yeah, or, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we did start late, but we're almost at the, the end of our hour. But if there are any kind of burning questions at the end, yes? So just a suggestion based on the experience um, this year. Um, last year I taught my own tutorials. So obviously, there's no coordination problem there. But this year I had, I decided to have two TAs. And um, I think it worked quite well because, A, I just picked them from the tree. So as they arrived to start their PhD program, I said, please come with me. <laughs> uh, so that, you know, there's a step between the undergraduate studies they have done uh, with the traditional models and, and the fact that they now they start the PhD. And I, I, I persuaded them to switch because I said, this is much closer to your research approach rather than the traditional uh, method. And they were, they, they pick it up quite easily because of these two factors, yeah. Anyone else? No? Last chance? Okay, um, in that case, thank you very much to all our speakers and we'll break for lunch. Thank you.